Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be ranking for you all of the palettes that I tried in the month of December. I usually like to do these mid-month so I can still play around with some of the palettes that I played with towards the end of the month. So if you want to see what I tried and my thoughts on everything, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. December, on the contrary though, was not so much new makeup. Normally around December and January makeup releases really slowed down so it allowed me to really play with my makeup and dig into older palettes that I wanted to try and I just never got the opportunity to. There's a few new palettes, not very many, but a lot of palettes that kind of have been sitting on my to be tried desk and I picked it up and I tried them all out. We are gonna start off with 11. So I tried 11 new palettes in the month of December, which is pretty light compared to what I normally do. So it was really nice. I really did get to dig into these palettes. This one was a new release and this should not be of shock to you if you saw my review. There's two of these in this video. So this is the Dior Trio Bleak Trio in the shade Triple Bloom. Not a very good palette. I'm just gonna show you at number 10 as well so I can compare the two. Number 10 is Pure Petals, also a Trio Bleak quad here. Basically, both of these kind of look the same, so you don't need two of these. One is a little bit more cooler with a touch more depth, but in reality, there isn't much depth to either of these trios because this, look at this color. So this is what's supposed to add the depth. I'm working really hard to get the color up. Now it's skipped because of my bones, but that's kind of not very good. So the texture itself, it feels almost sticky. It's really hard to build up. You can dig as hard as you want. You're not gonna get much depth. I applied it with my finger, and since it's almost sticky, it didn't blend out. Just a horrible color. Now, the top two colors in both trios aren't bad. Uh, like, this is a really pretty wash all over the lid, but it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing extraordinary. Dior does so much better, so these, to me, were a very big waste of money. They're beautiful, and as a makeup collector, I still am happy to have that, but I almost wish I didn't touch these because they're bad, and now they're not as pretty anymore, so I chose pure petals as the better one because I like this peachy shade. I think it's really pretty and soft on the eye. And overall, it gives you a soft effect. The look isn't going to be ugly by any means, but for what you pay, the quality on these are just disappointing. Moving on to number nine, we have the ColourPop Hello Kitty and Friends eyeshadow palette. So this is a nine pan eyeshadow palette of really sweet light colors. This just isn't my favorite palette from ColourPop in general. It's not necessarily bad quality, but it's not good quality. I think ColourPop typically has a better formula than this one, and the colors aren't amazing. You can definitely get a pretty look. A couple of the looks that I created with this I actually really, really enjoyed, but it's not an inspiring palette. The quality is nothing to write home about. I like this palette because I love Hello Kitty, so for that reason, I do not regret purchasing this palette at all, but it's not a palette that I would recommend to anybody purchasing unless you're a Hello Kitty fanatic like myself, so I was just pretty unimpressed with this. It was only the concept in the packaging. That's why I purchased it. Moving on to number eight, I have this five pan palette from Kaleidos. This is the Futurism Sashimi City. I cannot believe, and the counterpart to this one will also be in this video, it took me so long to try these. I have been dying to try these and finally I found the time. So this one is the more neutral one of the two that came out. Something about the formula in, in these don't seem quite as good as the other ones that I have but they're still really nice and their topper shades as always are very very beautiful but I had to dig into the color a little bit more and just the color story in general isn't something that I love. It's a little bit more light and peachy. I wish it had more of a nude twist to it. So I'm just not in love with the color story. The lid toppers are amazing, but the mattes don't blow me away. The next 
palette that we have, which is number seven, is the Beauty by Sony Remedy Eyeshadow Palette. Now, I received this in PR a while ago, and I've been wanting to dig into this. It's a very interesting color story. It's not necessarily a color story that I love personally. It's not my cup of tea, but I did really enjoy creating looks with this palette. It's definitely got a unique color story, and there's a lot of room for different types of looks in here. I created a very warm look. I created a purple look. You have pop of blue and I really love this shade right here so overall color story wise I didn't find it to be a color story that I was deeply in love with but the formula was very workable actually it was quite easy and I was able to create very unique looks so they did release I'm not sure if it's released yet but they have a, a remedy to eyeshadow palette and that one I have in my collection I'm gonna try that very soon and let you guys know I really like that color story more than this one so I'm excited for that one but this is not a bad palette if you like the color story I think it will work really great on deeper skin tones as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is a black owned independent brand as well. And I like the formula a lot, just not my favorite color story. Number six here is that Kaleidos counterpart that I was talking about. This is Lunar Lavender. Obviously this is ranking higher because you know, you know that this color story calls my name out. I have an IG reel on my Instagram where I do a whole tutorial with this palette if you're interested to see the look that I created with it. While I absolutely love this color story, again, this formula isn't as good as all of the other Kaleidos palettes that I have. I found the mattes really, really needed to be built up. I was going back into the color a lot to try and build up the pigmentation. So overall, because the base color is so beautiful, the look that you're going to get is stunning. But to get the opacity that I wanted on my eyelid I did have to put extra time into getting it there moving in to number five we have the ColourPop fade into hue palette now this one I feel like is a palette that you're either going to love or hate I don't think this is the best or easiest formula to work with but for me I just really like the options that I have in here I love the way that this palette is arranged I love the different textures but you have to work slow with this palette particularly in these two bottom rows you'll find that the these deeper mattes are extremely powdery. This palette makes a huge mess. I did film another IG reel uh, using the purple row and it was beautiful but I couldn't show the palette while I put the brush in because the powder would just fall everywhere. It's a huge mess and there's a lot a lot of kickback but if you work slowly I think with the amount of colors that you get it is still worth it. So for me I like this just because of the versatility and the inspiration I've had to create a lot of different looks from this palette. It does take a little bit of extra work but it still is pretty good. As long as you're patient you can get it to work. You can get the look that you want and I just think typically for these types of colors it is harder to formulate and at the price point I'm gonna say it's okay. Number four, we have another ColourPop palette. I didn't realize I tried so many ColourPop palettes in the month of December, so I finally got to dig into the At Forest site collaboration palette with Raw Beauty Christie, and I like this palette much better than her Pure collaboration. Is it my favorite color story? No, I just don't think Christie and I have the same taste, because while this palette isn't an exact replica of her Pure palette, it does have similar tones in here and similar shades, and these grungy tones down here just don't do it for me, and I guess that's what she seems to like. I've had mixed opinions about this palette. I've used it to create, I believe, four looks at this point, and when I play with the top two rows, I really, really, really love this palette, but when we get into the deeper grungy tones, which I guess is what makes the palette more unique and more special, these are harder to work with, but again, you're not paying a lot for these. So overall, I think this is a really nice palette. I've liked the looks that I've created so far. I do think it's missing a shimmer shade to kind of go with this corner over here, so I don't really like that there's only two shimmers personally for the types of looks that I like to create. It's just color story-wise, Christy and I, we don't align, but it is a nice palette. It's a unique palette. I don't have a lot of palettes that look like this in my collection and it's quite affordable. So pretty good palette. Number three is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Palette and this is in the shade Star Aura. Now there are two other quads that came out in this line but this is the only one that I tried at the very very end of 2020 so the next two will be in my January rankings. I don't know which one of the three I like the most. I think this one is my second favorite I would say but I actually really ended up liking this because I do feel like this is a color story that I see myself grabbing for a lot. It's the perfect 
light everyday nudes. It is a bit underwhelming and I do think it is overpriced. I would like to see more depth from this quad. It is very kind of one tone, one shade kind of deal here. So this in my review, I kind of said you don't really need it. It's not the best one. If you want to pay that type of price, she has other quads that are better. But at the end of the day, these are colors that I do reach for a lot. So I do see myself getting some use out of this. Number two is the palette that I'm wearing right now. Not many people talked about this palette, but for some reason it called my name. I think part of it had to do just with this color packaging. I love it. This is the NARS Euphoria Face Palette. And as you can see, I played with these two colors today to get the look. I really use this quad right here to get the look that I'm wearing. I like this palette. I don't think it is crazy unique or anything, but I think the NARS formula is very nice. I like the NARS highlighters as well. So overall, I think this has been a really nice, easy to grab for palette. Just a palette that I didn't have to think about. If you get it, I think you'll like the formula. I'm not in love with this formula. That's my eyelid color. It was a little bit lackluster for me. I had to build it up. But for the most part, if you're looking for a palette that's reliable, great for every day, but you also have the option to add a fun pop. I do still really like this palette and I've been enjoying it. It's nothing amazing, but I don't know. I always find myself grabbing for NARS palettes a lot. I just like their quality. Moving on to my number one favorite palette that I tried in the month of December. It took many months for me to try this, but I finally dug into the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice palette and I have not been able to look back. I love this palette. Now, I will say I don't love the formula. There are some shades in here that I do find to be a little bit more difficult to blend. Some are maybe a little bit more chunky on the shimmery side, but I know how to work with the colors and the color story in here is what has brought this to the top. I've been be able to create so many different looks, warm looks, pink looks, purple looks, green looks, olive looks, just all different kind of looks. So whoever arranged this color story, kudos to you. It's incredible. I love the way that the final look comes out every time. And so yes, every now and then it might be a bit of a journey to get there, but I've loved all of the looks that I've come up with and I truly regret not talking about this earlier for you guys because this palette has sold out. I will take a look to see if I can find any available for you guys to purchase so make sure you check out my description box but this is one of my favorite holiday palettes to have released. All right, you guys, there you have it. Those were all of the palettes that I tried in December, right? For the most part, December was a pretty disappointing month as far as eyeshadow palettes. While there were a few that I liked, the rest were kind of just eh. Nothing really spectacular came out of December eyeshadow palette wise. And normally I don't say that. Normally I go, I love all the palettes that I tried this month. Really can't say that for this month. <laughs> I guess because no new releases came out. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.